G'day, and welcome to the AOS Coach sneak peek into the 2022 Daughters of Cain Battle Tome. That's right, there is another update to Daughters of Cain. It is updated for third edition, and Games Workshop were kind enough to send me this copy in advance. However, like always, I'm under no obligation to do a review, nor will they see this video before it goes live. In this video, I'm going to focus on the Daughters of Cain Allegiance abilities, sub-faction rules, battle line options, and the various enhancements like spells, prayers, artifacts, while sharing some initial observations with you with a match play focus. To avoid making this video too long, I have separated the key war scroll changes, the new battle tactics, the grand strategies, and the points into a separate video. You'll find this book is chock full of art, narrative gems, path to glory rules, as well as a detailed map of the Realm of Shadow, Ulgu. You will also get that unique access code so you can unlock the rules in the AOS app. So let's just crack on and see all the good stuff in this new battle tome. Looking at the Allegiance abilities, Daughters of Cain are going to continue to enjoy the Blood Rites table, though there has been some slight changes that we'll discuss in a minute, as well as you've gained a new faction-wide heroic action, you have gained a new command ability, as well as a bit of a cleanup when it came to Fanatical Faith. Now, you have retained the six temples, so if you remember them, Hagnar, Calibron, Xanthar Kai, aka Cobra Kai, as well as the Kraith, Drakey, Ganeth, like they're all there. So nothing has changed in regards to the options. You haven't gained any more, but the rules have certainly changed. Battle Fury is that new heroic action. And if you use Battle Fury over heroic leadership, hero recovery, et cetera, et cetera, you have to carry it out with a Daughters of Cain hero that is not a monster. So that could be your new high gladiatrix. It could be one of the Medusa heroes. It could even be a Cauldron of Blood who isn't a monster, though it is a behemoth. And should you happen to use a Battle Fury, you will get two extra attack characteristics to the melee weapons used by that hero till the end of that turn. Now, the heroic action doesn't affect the weapons on the hero's mount. So a prime example of that would be your Cauldron of Blood. Your Cauldron of Blood wouldn't get the extra attacks. So certainly the avatar wouldn't get plus two attacks, but the hero, obviously, whether it's the Hag Queen, a Slaughter Queen, etc., etc., would gain the extra attack. So uh, you can't boost up those additional Witch Elves on top either. All that Slaughter is your new faction-wide command ability that you can issue in the combat phase. The way it works is that the command must be issued by a friendly Daughters of Cain unit, and it must be received by a unit that's going to be fighting. And when it does, you roll those attack dice, and if you roll an unmodified six to hit, it will score two attacks instead of one. So you'll normally make your wound roll, you'll make your normal save roll for each of those attacks, but essentially you're going to get exploding sixes and this is going to be great for you if you are flush with command points you're setting up because you've got really favorable blood rights and you've got multiple units in combat you've already used all that attack and you're looking for a couple of other options to fight in combat this is going to be a good option for like your double bladed witch elves your sisters of slaughter your blood sister snakes for example all good candidates for using all that slaughter Fanatical Faith has been cleaned up and is now defined as a 6 plus ward. So it means that Little Marathi is going to gain access to that ward where previously there was that weird technicality of some of the language. But look, it's cleaned up, good news. And as you can imagine, because it's a 6 plus, there are ways to modify that. Finally, we have the Blood Rites table that looks very familiar to Daughters of Cain players, with the exception that reroll ones have become plus ones. And there has been a change to Battle Round 5, where previously it used to give you reroll ones to save and ignore Battle Shock. It's now a five up ward. And if you're not familiar with the Blood Rites table, basically each battle round, there's going to be a benefit that you gain over time. So uh, it's not like, you know, turn one, this rule only applies, turn three, this rule only applies. It actually accumulates over the battle. So in turn one, you get plus one to your run rolls. In turn two, you get plus one to your charge rolls. In turn three, you get plus one to your hit rolls in melee. In uh, turn four, you get plus one to wound rolls in melee. And finally, turn five gives friendly Daughters of Cain unit a five up ward. Now you can modify the Blood Rites table through the game, whether it's through uh, various abilities, uh, sub-factions and different things, but you can get access to some of this stuff pretty soon. 
Overall, this is a good change because moving to a plus one to the various abilities over the rerolls is going to give you more reliability across the board. It means you're going to get more plus ones to hit. It means you're not going to rely on all out attack. It means that, you know, you're not going to fail a three inch charge unless there's a debuff in play. Uh, and the five up ward is going to be great for you to maybe hold on to your grand strategy in a tighter game. Now, obviously, there's a lot of things you can unpack here and put some of these things like, you know, plus one to your your run and charge roll, plus the fact things like witch elves, for example, with their musician allows them to run and charge. Again, lots of things you can start to do with the blood rights table, but know that your re-roll ones have become plus ones. Next up is your six sub factions, and you are quite rich with your choices. And as I previously mentioned, all six of them from your last book are still there. Hagnar, Drake, Ganeth, Kraith, Calibron, Keltmar, and Cobra Kai, I mean Xanthar Kai. Hagnar is going to give you plus one to the battle round when it comes to your blood rights table. So it means you'll get your plus one to your run and charge roll in turn one. And it means you get your, your five up ward save in turn four. Now, this is essentially the same as the old tome, just the blood rights table has changed. Drakey Ganeth has improved the Ren characteristic of the melee weapons for your Witch Elves and your Sisters of Slaughter by one if they charge in the same turn. So if you use Drakey Ganeth in the old book, um, it's the same rule. When it comes to the Kraith, your Sisters of Slaughter, when they fought for the first time in combat, will be able to fight a second time on a four up but they're going to fight last when it comes to that second combat fight. So uh, you got to roll a four up, obviously, but, you know, getting mo maximum out of your Sisters of Slaughter will be good, especially with like a six inch pile in. Calibron have gained the extra command ability that is used in your end of your movement phase, and it has to be issued by a friendly Calibron hero, and it must be received to a friendly Calibron unit. Now, what that allows you to do is it allows you to set that unit up anywhere on the battlefield so long as it's nine inches away from enemies this has gotten a little bit easier because in the old book it had to be your general from memory now it's just any calibron hero keltnar can still retreat and charge in the same turn which is the same as the old book and finally xanthar kai allows your snakes to fight before they die uh, this is a new ability Hagnar remains a strong faction for regardless of which type of build you like, whether it's Witch Elves, Sisters of Slaughter, or your Snake varieties, the Hagnar will benefit all of them by getting into the Blood Rites table a little bit sooner. I personally, being a Witch Elf player, have fallen in love with Drake Ganeth, being able to get that additional boost of Rend when I charge, especially when I'm you know, accessing the Blood Rites table, getting the run and charge from the, the Witch Elves. I'm going to get into combat sooner, especially with the table being reduced a little bit compared to the old edition. While things like your Calibron and your Keltnar is going to work well with your movement shenanigans, uh, Xanthar Kai is going to be a nice little one if you play with your snakes, although you might prefer another build. Um, I know Calibron, for example, can be popular to kind of teleport and move things around. But hey, lots of good options, and I'm sure we'll unpack this at a future date. But the other consideration when it comes to your uh, sub-factions is going to be your battle line options. And as always, your Witch Elves and your Sisters of Slaughter will be battle line regardless of the type of sub-faction you choose. But there will be a couple of different options that will open up and one that really excited me. So your Blood Sisters and your Blood Stalkers are still battle line options. But you've gained a new battle line option through the, the Shadow Stalkers, the Knight Shadow Stalkers, the, the unit that was introduced through Warcry, a uh, very popular screening unit for various reasons, but it's actually a really good option to be considered as battle line. Now, there are no options to make any of your Canary battle line. It was one of the first things I wanted to look for. Unfortunately, neither of your, your Canary uh, can be battle line. But if you take Xanthar Kai or your general is a Miluse, which I believe is just the Iron Scale, you're going to get your Blood Sisters and your Blood Stalkers as battle line options, which obviously means you can double reinforce them. If you take Calibron as your sub faction, you're going to be able to access Knight Shadow Stalkers as battle line, which is actually a really cool option. Now, at the back of the book, there's something else that's not on the screen that I thought would be worth calling out here. And there's a couple of these things that I haven't seen before in another book. Uh, one example here is if you take Drakey Ganeth 
as your sub faction it does allow you to take one reinforced or double reinforced unit of witch elves in addition to any other units that you can include now i guess that allows you to get more reinforcement points i'm not really sure if i need 90 witch elves but hey next general's handbook is coming and who knows what types of incentives are coming in play uh the same rule applies for hagnar but it allows you to take one of the different cauldrons uh in addition to any other units you want to take but it's, it's not saying that you're getting a free cauldron it's just saying you're allowed to, i guess to take an extra one there are seven command traits to choose from. Arcane Mastery is only for wizards, and it gives access to all of the Lore of Shadows. Bathed in Blood allows you to heal one wound to your general for each enemy that is slain in combat. Fueled by Revenge is for your Iron Scales only, and it is once per battle. When you activate this at the start of the combat phase, until the end of that phase, you can add one to the attack characteristic of melee weapons used by friendly Melusa units, wholly within 12 inches of the general. Zealous Orator allows a general to issue rally on slain models and generate them back on a four up instead of a six plus, which is massive. Uh, Masters of Poison at the end of the combat phase will deal D6 mortal wounds to one unit that has wounds allocated by the general. Sacrificial Overseer will let the general fight twice in the combat phase if any enemy models were slain by their, their attacks in that phase. However, th when they fight twice, they will have to strike last for the second round of attacks. Finally, True Believer will add one to the Blood Rites table for the general when determining what abilities it receives. So it doesn't give plus one to everybody, purely just for the general. Now, if I'm building a snake heavy list, I'm looking at something like Fueled by Revenge because it's going to allow me to have a powerful round of melee with extra attacks. I'm tapping into the Blood Rites table for some extra boosts. But if I'm going to what I traditionally like to play, things like my Witch Elves, maybe I'm thinking about the Cauldron of Blood accessing True Believer for an early uh, five up ward save in say turn three if I'm playing Hagnar. Or maybe the Zealous Orator will allow me to bring back more stabby, stabby, fragile Witch Elves, but obviously I can't bring them back if they're in combat. So um, there's a lot of good options for me here. I don't think there's necessarily just the, the one to pick. There are nine artifacts to choose from, and your first choice is no longer locked into your sub-faction like it used to. Uh, when I used to play Hagner, I'd always have that artifact that I would never use. It was never beneficial to me. But now I don't have to look at things like Warlord or any other way to get an extra artifact in my list. And the nine artifacts are broken down into four universal artifacts for any Daughters of Cain hero, three that are specific to wizards, and another two that are specific to priests. Bloodbane Venom allows you to pick one of your bearer's melee weapons and after the bearer has fought if there are any wounds caused by attacks made by that weapon in the phase that were allocated to an enemy model and the enemy model hasn't been slain so you do a bunch of wounds the model doesn't die you roll a dice if that roll is equal to or greater than the model's wound characteristic that model will be auto slain the Chrome Blade, you get to pick one of the bearer's melee weapons, and if the unmodified hit roll for the attack is a 6, you get to heal one wound allocated to the bearer after all of the attacks have been resolved. Now, Crown of Woe, and probably my favorite one, is enemy units cannot receive the Rally or Inspiring Presence command while they're within 9 inches of the bearer. And in addition, and I love this one, if the enemy model is slain by wounds caused by the bearer's attacks, that range, that bubble, is increased to 15 inches for the rest of the battle. The last universal is the Rune of Cain, and the first time that the bearer is slain, uh, it can actually fight before it's removed from play. But Crown of Woe has to be one of my favorites here because as we approach that battle line meta for General's Handbook 2022, we see the return of screens, we're seeing more hordes hitting the table. If I go in and slay an enemy model with the hero that obviously has the Crown of Woe, uh, let's say it's my Cauldron of Blood that has the Crown of Woe, then all of a sudden I have this massive 15 inch aura that is going to stop my opponent not only rallying, but inspiring presence. And Considering we're seeing more and more examples of four up rallies, Fire Slays is one of those examples. Um, this could be a very powerful ability. Daughters of Cain Wizards get access to three extra artifacts to choose from, one being the Crystal Heart, where when the bearer attempts to cast a 
endless spell the range is doubled when you're i guess doing the endless spell you've got the sevenfold shadow where once per battle in the movement phase instead of making a normal move with the bearer you can remove it from the battlefield and set them up anywhere more than nine inches away from enemy units and finally you've got the shadow stone that adds plus one to casting rolls for when the bearer is attempting to cast something from the lore of shadows all three of them have a good use the sevenfold shadow will allow me to potentially score a battle tactic or reposition my wizard anywhere on the battlefield, which might help um, depending on what I'm up against. Things like Crystal Heart would be really nice to maybe extend the, the range of the Blood Viper or just getting an overarching plus one to my casting for anything from the Lore of Shadows. All three of them, I think, are very good options, again, depending on what you're building and how you're playing your list. Finally, your Daughters of Cain Priests get two artifacts. And I'm sure you've already noticed it already, the Iron Circlet has disappeared. The Blood Sigil allows you to pick one extra prayer for the bearer from the prayers of the Canite Cult. The other one is the Canite Pendant, and once per battle, before the bearer chants that prayer, they can go and draw upon the uh, power of the Pendant. And if you do so, that prayer is automatically cast or chanted. You don't make a chanting roll, it just happens. And I am sad to see the Iron Circlet disappear, but of the two options, if I was going to pick one, it would be the Knight Pendant to get that auto prayer off at that clutch time where I really need a specific prayer. And we'll talk about the prayers in a minute. But, you know, if I really want to get those prayers off, I, I really, I don't want to, you know, roll a dice and fail it at a, a clutch time. Um, you know, I'm setting up for that strong combat thanks to the Blood Rites table. It's good to have an auto kind of cast up my sleeve. Speaking of priests, your wizards and your priests have access to six prayers and six spells through the spell law. Uh, when it comes to your spells, you will notice that you have the same six spells that you used to have through the law of shadows, but there are a few small changes. Things like the Steed of Shadows, the Withering, Mind Razor, and Shroud of Despair are all the same. I didn't notice any differences between the old book and the new book. Pit of Shades used to cast on a 7, it is now casting on a 6. Everything else like the range and its abilities are the same, so you got a, got a little bit easier to cast Pit of Shades. Now Mirror Dance has changed and you can no longer teleport if you are in combat. You must be wholly within range of the caster, visible to the caster, and you must be more than 3 inches away from all enemy units. Now you must set up those units within one inch of the location that was previously occupied by the other model before it is kind of switched from the battlefield. So it's basically kind of switching two units as opposed to a free teleport anywhere around the board. On the priest side, you've got the same six prayers that you used to in the old book. Catechism of Murder, Blessing of Cain, Martyr Sacrifice, Crimson Rejuvenation, uh, Coven of the Iron Heart, and Sacrament of Blood are all the same. I didn't notice a difference between the books. Maybe you did, but I certainly didn't. Blessing of Cain is probably still my favorite prayer when I'm coming to my priests, but though it's probably closely tied to Catechism of Murder, but again, depending on the build, I'm more witch elf heavy. Snake people might disagree and think something else is better. So we're at the halfway mark of the Battle Tome, and it's fair to say Daughters of Cain will remain competitively strong and good in the meta. The Blood Rites table did slightly change by going from re-roll ones to plus ones, and that really just aligns to third edition. And it probably would be rather ambitious if you thought that we were going to keep the re-rolls because they've been removing them from third edition. The five up ward is probably a lot more useful than plus one to my save, and the new command ability and the heroic action is a nice touch. There wasn't too much disruption for me between battle tomes. So when I look at those sub factions and the battle line options, look, I really like the inclusion of the shadow stalkers. It's never really been an option to be battle line, but I love the ability that it allows you to reinforce or double reinforce this unit. If I'm going to be running Calibron, which also might free up some points for other areas, whether it's a cauldron, whether it is some snakes or whether it is, you know, big mama pump Marathi. No matter how you're building your army, there is going to be a good option for command trade, artifacts, spells, and prayers for you. 
I'm coming at this at a very heavily witch elf focus, and I know there are plenty of options for me, but equally, if I talk to my snake counterparts, I'm sure they would agree there are plenty of good options. Yes, I can complain that I don't have certain options like the Iron Circlet, but you know, artifacts are being reduced. Things like rerolls, again, Iron Circlet was one of the reasons we, we took it because of the reroll ones to your, your chanting. Unfortunately, those are disappearing from the game what we've seen in the battle tome so far is it's not a rewrite it's not like maggotkin of nurgle where the the army fundamentally changed the way it played to me the daughters of cain book feels like it's just a minor tweak it's just a minor tweak to the uh the new edition and there's a few things that needed to be improved some things that need to disappear but in the next video i will look at the match play options the grand strategies the battle tactics the core battalion war scroll changes and points but in the meantime i would appreciate it if you let me know in the comment section what you're thinking so far are you a daughters of cain player and has the information i've shared with you so far changed the way that you're looking at your army and if you're not a daughters of cain player and you are daughters curious um are you considering joining the cult of marathi and what is drawing you to the game let me know in the comment section i'd appreciate to hear how you're thinking about this but overall I'm excited as a Daughters player. Let's see what the other video brings. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so link is down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigma conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.